Now before I start this video I have included this video in both the new features in version 8 and the version 8 course 2 um, courses on my website so that you can actually download the video from there but anyone who's not enrolled in those courses can watch it here in version 8.2 and version 8 but hopefully you've all updated to 8.2 now um, the there is a feature which is the show connectors and it's highlighted here so you can turn it on but you can't see anything in true view so you need to go out of true view by hitting T on your keyboard or clicking on this icon here and then you can see your connectors if you've got this connectors highlighted shift C is the keyboard shortcut so if I zoom in here you can see that you have little triangles and little circles um, there's a circle there and there's a triangle there and between those are a connector which means that there's a jump stitch there um, now depending on how, how you've got your machine set up it may trim and you won't have a jump stitch but um, when you're digitizing it's important to reduce these jumps as much as possible anyway um, to get a smooth stitch out so these are really helpful to show up where you've got jumps and when you're fine tuning your design before you even test sew you should eliminate as many jump stitches as possible. Now these are different to the um, start and end points of each object. So um, there may not be a connector if you've got two objects close enough together so that there doesn't need to be a jump there won't be a connector between those two objects it will just continue stitching and in you can set the distance in your software by default it's um, two millimeters if two objects are two millimeters or less closer together there won't it will just and they're the same color it won't create a jump so you won't get connectors okay now as I said these are really useful to help you eliminate your jump stitches but you need to go back one step so I'm going to go back to true view and zoom out so when you've created your design um, you've got a, a series of objects the first thing you should do is put those objects in the stitch order you want them to stitch and I've already done that so um, obviously the things you need underneath need to stitch first and the things you need on top need to stitch last so you need to go through your design step by step now um, sometimes you digitize and then you decide to move objects underneath each other and um, move them in the stitch order and that can be done in your color film by selecting an object and then you've got all these options for moving and I go into those in detail in my online course um, but you can also check the on um, on screen manual under help about that so I've already done that as I said I've put them in the the order I want them to stitch so that I've got this leaf stitching on top of that stem for the flower and I've got them underneath the actual um, border around here and you can see that in your color film each object in its stitch order all right now because I moved things when I digitized I had by default the closest join activated and that is in your options so if you go up to your little hammer and spanner options icon and click on that there is an option under other at the bottom here apply coast closest join while digitizing and that's all well and good if you have digitized in the exact order that you want the objects to stitch out but that's not always possible because we can't always visualize straight away once you start moving objects around the start and end points of each object stay where they were when they were originally digitized so you start to get 
more jump stitches as you move objects around so that's why you need to then go back in once you've got your stitch order established and check all that so um, I prefer to digitize with the apply closest join while digitizing because it's quicker and easier but then you do need to go back in and check so I'll go OK with that and leave that activated. So the quickest way to check is to um, click on your first item in your uh, stitch order in the colour film to select it. And I'm going to zoom in a bit for you here. So this is the first object that stitches in this design. And if I go to the reshape tool, I can hunt around and find the start and end points for that object and the start is indicated by a green diamond the end points a red cross so I know this object's going to start stitching here and stitch around and end there now it's the easiest way to move to the second object is to hit tab on your keyboard so I'll zoom out a bit because I know the next object is this one down here. So I'm going to tab and you can see here the start is over here and the end is over here. Now I'm thinking um, ahead now of how I want this to stitch out and I really want the start point to be over here because if I go back and you can go backwards by shift tab this one's going to end here and start here. I actually want when this one finishes to, to create a pathing line to this next object rather than a jump stitch. If I go back to out of true view and I go to select, I can see here that I've got the end here and I've got a jump stitch going to the start of this object here. I want to get rid of that by creating a path stitching to this second object. So I need to know where this one starts and ends and I need to make this one start in a logical position. So I'm going to go back into True View and go back to Reshape. So to me it would be logical if this end point was closer to this second object. So I'm going to swap these over. I'm going to get this to start stitching over here and finish stitching about them there in the middle. Okay it does change the look slightly of the stitching but you won't notice we zoomed right in you won't notice that actually in the stitch out. Okay now I'm going to tab to the next object and it's starting over here so I don't want to have to path here and path all the way along there so why don't I move this start point over here and then I only have to path to there and if I tab I know the next object is this one here so why do I have to end over here I could end here and I won't even need a path or a jump stitch so I'll shift tab back to this stem and move this end point the red cross by left clicking and dragging to somewhere where it can start this last leaf that's on top without having to jump and then if I tab to this last leaf sorry tab not caps lock <laughs> tab if I put the start where this stem finished so I need to get the start from up here down to there that will eliminate the connector. I'll just undo that so I can show you how that eliminates. So um, my start is still here. This stem is finishing here. If I go out of true view I can see the connectors and you can see the stem ending here with a triangle and a jump to a little tiny circle in the start over there. If I zoom in can you see that better? It's, it doesn't increase the size of the circle but I think you can focus a little bit better there where my cursor is. So I've got that jump stitch. Now if I move that start down to here, that jump stitch is gone and those connectors have gone because these objects are so close together there's no need for a connector. 
So there's no little triangle here and there's no little circle there. So that's where the connectors are really useful in making sure that you get your start and end points in the right place. Now, of course, I've still got this connector here between this object. There's a little um, triangle there and a little circle here where this one this object's ending um, sorry a little circle here where this stem starts that connector there I can remove that with a path so what I'm going to do is digitize a path now a path is just a running stitch from one point to another so if I click on select and click off so nothing's selected I can still see my connectors so I know where I have to run my path from from the little triangle to the um, little circle so I'm going to use an open object now before I start making my paths something I picked up recently is that your path doesn't have to be short stitches um, it can be longer stitches which reduces the amount of stitching um, and over the whole design it might not mean much in a very short path like this but over the whole design you can reduce the number of stitches considerably by making your paths with a slightly longer stitch and um, so you have less needle penetrations it's going to be covered by the next object so you don't need to worry about looping or anything like that or catching because it's going to be covered that's the nature of a path so I'm, before I get my open object, I'm going to go to my single outline and go to the object properties and where the stitch length is 2 by default, I'm going to make that 4. Now sometimes you have to go around bends in a path, um, so I make sure I've got variable run length checked and the minimum length is 1. So if the software needs to shorten the stitches to get around a curve it can do that if you've got the variable run length checked so you don't need to worry about big long stitches trying to get round curves the software will organize that provided you've put a check in the variable run length and it should be checked by default so we'll go okay because now that's set up as um, any future um, single outlines that I digitize from now on unless I change it will have those settings so they'll all be um, a four millimeter stitch length so I choose my open object and I choose my color which I want the same color as the leaves and I've got single outline chosen and I can go from this connector triangle here sorry this make sure you're on the right one so I want to eliminate this connector here so I'm going to start from this triangle here left click and I can basically just make a straight line and left click there and enter now the connectors didn't disappear and in fact I got another set of connectors because when you digitize something it automatically goes to the bottom of the stitch order so we need to now move that that path to the place we want it now I know I know it's pretty close to the top so as for a shortcut I'm going to select it so I'll go down here and select it in the color film and then move it right to the start that might not always be the best option but because I know it's got to go between this first object and this second object that was the quickest way to get it close and now I just need to go down one object so I'm going to click on the down one object and lo and behold those connector triangles and circles have gone I've no longer got a connector or a jump stitch there so you need to go right through your whole design and do that so as I said put your objects in the stitch order you want them first then go in and check your start and end points and move them to where it's logical for the stitch out and then go in and create your paths where they're required so um, just as I did with this one to eliminate as many of those jumps as possible now obviously it's not always possible to eliminate all jumps because you can't always travel underneath another object to get to the next object so you just need to think that through. 
But I hope this video has helped you a lot in fine tuning your design and drawing your attention to the use, um, the value of these connector, show connectors. Um, it's a really useful um, tool in the software.